Coffee makes everything possible. I truly believe this to be an actual truth. This is a truth of, this is a truth of life. Ali here, so today we're gonna to talk about why I quit coffee on the carnivore diet, and um, we're gonna talk about if you on the carnivore diet should or shouldn't drink coffee, and I will give my opinion on that at the end of the video. But I'm gonna go specifically over why I quit coffee. So we need to understand that I have been on the carnivore diet since March 2023. We are now uh, at midway through September 2024, and um, just over a week ago, I quit drinking coffee for a very specific reason. I have Hashimoto's. I wish I understood that I had that seven years ago when I was like not completely correctly diagnosed with a thyroid condition. Or if I was, it wasn't communicated to me clearly enough or, 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 or. I don't know why, but it's very clear that I have Hashimoto's and this is when you have an excessive amount of antibodies attacking your thyroid. And it makes sense that everything that changed for me within days of carnivore settled down because I was reducing the inflammation in my body and the symptoms of Hashimoto's, but I didn't realize what that was. So I actually thought it was like the most magical thing to eat in a way, in a carnivore way of eating. Okay, so let's get back to the coffee. In this entire time, I have drank coffee. I, it would not be a lie to say, or a stretch of the imagination to say that I could down a pot of black coffee a day by myself. One day, one entire pot of coffee, possibly more. Mm. If my stomach started getting upset, that's around the time I might stop drinking coffee. So, you know, I like the heart racing feeling. I like, I like the get up and go feeling it gives you, um, but that's an excessive amount of coffee. And this can have bad ramifications on uh, various organs in the body. First of all, it stops a hormone in your brain. Like you, when you drink coffee, you feel more awake. It doesn't make you more awake. It stops a hormone in your brain that makes you feel tired. So like when you're supposed to feel tired and you don't feel tired because you're drinking coffee, it's because it's stopping that hormone. Um, it could increase adrenaline from what I understand and the research I've done. It also can ex uh, increase cortisol. So if you have a lot of cortisol going through your body, you're not gonna lose weight. Um, if you're stressed out, you're not gonna lose weight. And I was constantly, with that amount of excessive coffee, putting my body in a stressful state. I, I, I loved it. I love coffee. Love, love, love mugs to prove it. First I drink the coffee, then I do the things. Morning, a hug in a mug. He gave me this one, Chicago, and so it's one of my favorite coffee cups. I guess I will replace it with tea. By drinking the amount of coffee I was drinking, I was constantly putting my body into like this state of of stress, like constant fight or flight mode. Um, like I didn't realize how bad it was. So, okay, so stress is a trigger for these antibodies um, that attack your thyroid. Okay, so I'm like, okay, so I've like eliminated almost everything I possibly can out of my diet and I still have like a very high level of these antibodies flowing through my system. So I'm like, okay, I think I need to actually confront this situation with the coffee. I know it's an addiction I have. So. Like a week ago Sunday, I said, okay, Monday I'm quitting coffee. I was terrified of the withdrawal symptoms. And that's really probably one of the reasons why I haven't attempted to drink coffee. I needed a reason good enough for me to actually quit drinking the coffee. Just being on the carnivore diet and because somebody says so is for sure not a good enough reason for me. I will do, I, I'm gonna even another example. I'm gonna talk about something else and then you'll understand this a little bit better about how my mind works. So I was a heavy cigarette smoker for 17 years. I started smoking a day before my 18th birthday on purpose to be a rebel because I am a rebel apparently. Um, and I smoked all the way until I was pregnant with my first son and then it was like the easiest thing. During these 17 years, I often thought of quitting smoking, but I never had the right reason. One time I wanted to quit smoking because I liked a guy and he didn't like smoking, for instance. Like these were not good reasons for me to quit smoking. Uh, and it never worked. And so when I had the most powerful reason to quit smoking, I just quit. On the few occasions that I barely attempted to quit smoking, the withdrawal symptoms would come and I would just pick up a cigarette or I'd feel something and I would just want to smoke. So it just, you know, it was never a good enough reason. Okay, so now I'm doing my journey in carnivore. I never had a good enough reason to quit coffee. Oh, we need to talk about one thing. So during that whole process, when I quit smoking, it was the easiest thing in the world. I just changed my mind because I had a good enough reason in my mind, which was the baby growing inside of me. I wanted that baby to live. 
and I knew that smoking would not be good for the health of my pregnancy and the health of my baby, so I quit. Guess what? I had zero withdrawal symptoms. I will say, you know, with that, I quit during the first trimester. I quit within, I think, the same day that I saw that I was pregnant. Um, so maybe I had some withdrawal symptoms, but that could be easily very, very confused with first trimester symptoms. So I always say I didn't have any withdrawal symptoms because I think what I was experiencing was like first trimester, headaches, uh, nausea, etc. So I say, good. I never had withdrawal symptoms because I had a good enough reason exterior to me as to why I needed, or it was bigger than my thoughts. It was bigger than me, it was bigger than my thoughts. I was having a baby, I needed to quit smoking. So now, let's fast forward, I'm doing the carnivore diet. Now I have a huge reason. I'm actually trying to handle my health. Like once and for all, I, I was diagnosed with this thyroid condition. I couldn't care less about it because they just wanted to give me meds but I didn't realize all the things that it started creating progressively by not really understanding my actual condition. So now a year and a half into carnivore, I actually understand the condition that I have and now I need to handle it. I've eliminated so much out of my diet by doing, following a carnivore way of eating. Am I perfect? No. And I always say that because I don't want think, people to think that I just eat meat, salt, water. That's not true. Sometimes, once in a while, I will add something, I will eat a bite of something here or there. And I just want to make that clear because some people are like, maybe they think, oh, you haven't lost the weight because you cheat. Um, no, I don't think so. I think my hormones are wrecked and I keep purposely wrecking them by my addiction to coffee and possibly cheese. So actually I quit cheese last week also. I don't think these things I'm about to tell you that are super amazing have anything to do with the cheese actually. Even though maybe I'm not retaining as much water because I seem to when I eat a lot of cheese get a little like puffy. So whatever. Back to the coffee. I've been drinking coffee for many, many years and my addiction has just gotten worse and worse and worse and worse. I was so scared that when I stopped drinking coffee, I was gonna have terrible withdrawal symptoms. I'm so sorry if you stopped drinking coffee and you feel terrible um, because I really didn't experience that so much. Day one, day two, day three, maybe one or two days, I woke up, I didn't drink coffee. I felt very tired in the morning, like very tired. Um, one or two days, I felt like my mind was full of, uh, full of uh, cotton. There you go. It was like a little bit hard to concentrate. And um, yeah, that happened. Then that passed. Uh, if I smell coffee, I would love to drink it, but I know that it's not good for my body because I know it's going to do for my body. So, all right, let's talk about some different benefits that happen for me by not drinking coffee. Um, number one, within 24 hours of drinking coffee, maybe a little bit like more than 24 hours, like the next day after not drinking coffee for a full day, so maybe 30 hours, uh, I just felt calm. What do I mean by that? I was able to just like sit down and be calm in like one place, like sit and not feel like I had to be moving and being productive and doing something uh, with my mind racing. I, people who know me and who've been following my channel know that I'm a very good fundraiser. People might or might not know that I was in sales for a while um, and I'm very good at sales. People might think sales, it's, it can be intense. And you get this like, like go, 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 go feeling. And maybe that's also related to drinking coffee. But when you're in sales, you're like, boom, 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 boom. Next, get the next sale, get the next sale, get the next sale. And now correlate that to your mind. Like if you are in that like mindset, like all the time, it's kind of like, it's not anxiety. It's like an agitation or like a feeling that you have to go, 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 go all the time. And so I'm not in sales anymore, but I still, for years have had that feeling, like I always have to go, 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 go. Um, push myself, push myself, push myself. Even when I couldn't, even at the worst part of my life <laughs> during, before I got to the carnivore diet, like the only thing that would calm me down would be like sitting on the couch and watching TV. I, like I'd always have this feeling like I have to do something, have to do something, have to do something, have to do something. And that's fine, like people should be productive. Totally, absolutely. But what if you're like just trying to be with your kids but your mind is somewhere else because you're like, I gotta do something or, or you're trying to do something but your mind's over here like trying to plan something else. I don't call this like anxiety. I call it, I don't know what it is, but I don't think it's anxiety because anxiety is like worry and this is more like me always constantly pushing myself in my mind to do something more often. Maybe this is on 24 seven, but I would find it on often, this feeling. And so the first day and a half after I had, had quit caffeine and quit coffee, I was literally just able to sit down and do a crossword puzzle. And I was just like, 
<sighs> and, I, and then I told this, my, my understanding of like what had occurred, I'm like, oh wow, this is this feeling that I always have where I actually feel bad if I'm not doing something, like constantly doing something or producing something or in motion or doing something. Like it was a feeling that made me feel bad if I wasn't achieving that. And I was like, oh my God, this is literally because I am addicted to coffee and I drink so much coffee. Like I'm a motion junkie or I'm a production junkie. And again, it's not bad to produce, you wanna produce stuff in life, but it's kind of crazy if you're always feeling that way. And when you're not, you're like, uh. And so no idea that that was related to the coffee and 100% sure that that was related to the coffee because it turned off within like 30 hours of drinking coffee. Um, I'm a really weird person in that I can drink like a pot of coffee a day and still go to sleep at like seven o'clock at night, maybe less than that. Uh, and I thought my sleep was okay. I actually thought my sleep completely changed. My sleeping patterns completely changed on carnivore. I will say I wake up um, in the recent past, I was waking up at like three or four in the morning, but I was three to five in the morning, but I was going to sleep at seven. And that's since I got over my bacterial infection, I was going to sleep purposely very early with my kids at night. Um, cause I need the, I felt like the body needs to recuperate more, but I was getting really annoyed waking up at three. I don't really know why that was. Um, I will say since I quit the coffee, I don't think I've w woken up at three. One night I woke up and I was hungry and I ate some butter and that actually helped me go back to sleep. Um, but in the recent days I haven't been waking up so early. So I, I, I think the sleep issue has improved. I will say there's other variables. If a, if a mosquito comes into my room and starts buzzing around my head at night, that will wake me up and I will be up. Um, I live in South America. There's, we have tried everything possible to make sure no mosquitoes get into our room. Like we have screens on the window, you know what I mean? But that happens. Another thing that wakes me up is my kids. Um, and I haven't been with my kids for a week and a half. Like I went away with my husband for my birthday and then my kids went on vacation with uh, my sister-in-law and uh, their grandma. So I haven't had my kids. And so I think that's a variable that I can't really pinpoint if my sleep is improved because my kids aren't here or my sleep is improved because I'm not drinking the coffee. It's probably a bit of both. Um, but I will say that just eating a carnivore diet dramatically improved my sleep, even with a ridiculous amount of coffee I drink. So I'm just, maybe getting the coffee out, I can sleep now until like 5 a.m. I woke up around 6-ish, 6 6.30 for instance this morning. So maybe the ability to stay asleep um, is a bit improved. We'll have to see what happens when my kids get back. But people always talk about stopping drinking coffee and then their sleep improving. And I'm not 100% closed that that's the case. Now, there is another thing that I wanna show you about and tell you about with the relationship to drinking, quitting coffee. So I don't know if you ever noticed you can't even tell right now. And I'm going to put a picture up from a video I did last week when I'm talking about quitting coffee for my Hashimoto's. And I have a big growth right here, a big white growth. And sometimes maybe people notice that in my videos or not. And uh, since carnivore, I'm like, when is this thing going to go away? Because all these other things changed in my body, things healed, but this thing wouldn't go away. Uh, my husband and I were talking about, okay, we need to go see an ophthalmologist. We went to a couple places. They kept sending us to other places because they couldn't just like pop it. I thought somebody could just pop it or take it out or whatever at a doctor's, at a, like an eye doctor place. Anyways, I needed to, I got a quote for getting an exam so that they can determine what operation I needed to get this thing out of my eye. It's more like an aesthetic thing than anything else. Or my opinion, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't do anything. It's just kind of white and ugly, I think. Um, I swear to God, within like a few days, this thing like, you can't even tell it's there anymore. You literally can't even tell it's there unless I'm like pointing it out. I will put the picture so you can literally see like how big it was. So whatever is in coffee kept that thing inflamed. My husband said, well, my eyeball seems to be coming out on the side of my eye. No, it's kind of gross. That's pretty amazing because imagine if I would have gotten an operation to like get this thing extracted out of that region and like healed and then I'm continuously drinking coffee and it just comes back like, this is so upsetting. We have to really understand like the things we're putting into our body, how it affects our body. I don't know what this is called. I tried Googling it. I tried asking AI and I couldn't find the answer, but it's like a white growth next to my eye and it's ugly. Again, it's not painful. It hasn't done anything. I've had it for years. Um, I noticed that when I ate carbohydrates, it will get more bigger, but um, 
it didn't really change so much dropping the carnivore diet in a time when I ate more carbohydrates, when I fell off my diet, um, I saw that it got bigger. And what's funny is that it never went away at all, but getting the coffee out was a huge difference. You could say, well, maybe it was the cheese. I don't know. I don't, I don't believe it was the cheese because I think there's been times, it might be it's a combination of the cheese and the coffee, but I really think it's the coffee. So that's, that's crazy. Um, another thing that changed is like a general feeling of like agitation. And maybe that's similar to the other thing that I brought up, like the go, go, go. I think that's a little bit different. Maybe it's like the same category of things, but I just feel so much calmer actually in the last week of getting the coffee out of my system. And I'm so sorry if you feel like crap when you get off coffee and I don't. Um, and I'm so happy that whatever withdrawal symptoms I had, and I'm like a heavy coffee drinker. So I expected like it to be very bad for weeks. The agitation is gone. Like, at least to some degree, like a general feeling of being agitated where things just like kind of have me on edge or set me off. Uh, and I'm doing those motions because that's kind of like how you feel like, Ugh. but again, it's not anxiety. It's a different sort of feeling. Um, and to just all of a sudden, oh, wow, I'm kind of calm today. My head is a little bit clearer. Uh, my head's clearer my, because I don't have this agitation or these other thoughts of like move, 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 move. Um, or I'm just saying like, that's like how you feel. You can be calm. Again, stress is a, um, stress is a trigger that creates antibodies for Hashimoto's. And right now I feel a lot calmer. And that's actually the main reason why I'm staying off coffee. At least um, I'm doing the 90 day experiment. So I wanna talk about, well, why don't we do moderation? Moderation of coffee. First, I wanna get out of my system for 90 days and see how I feel. I feel a lot better. Um, I believe doing carnivore, I had way more miraculous wins and successes within days, but I like this. I like the feeling of being calm. I like the feeling of knowing I'm probably doing something beneficial to actually heal my body. Uh, you are like, well, Nisha drinks coffee. She has Hashimoto's. Yeah, I totally got that. And you know, Hashimoto's is kind of about like how you feel. And I have never eliminated coffee. So I wanna see how I feel over the next, over the course of the next 90 days. Um, and I, I hear other people with Hashimoto's, they drink coffee, but we gotta talk about um, abstaining versus moderation and I at this point I need to abstain from coffee because I don't know if I could moderate coffee like once I have that first cup I'm gonna want another one uh, and another one and another one because coffee is very addictive um, so I want to get that addiction out of my body I do believe like if you have been eating very cleanly you might be able to moderate some foods and that all and I'm talking about like the carnivore diet in general you might be able to moderate some foods and feel better and um, Maybe you can eat something off and it doesn't trigger your eating obsessions. Um, I'm not there with coffee in my mind yet. Plus I wanna do the 90 days. And at the end of 90 days, I'm actually gonna retake the Hashimoto's antibody test to see where I stand um, in relationship to the Hashimoto's and see if it helped at all. But mentally it's helping a lot. Mentally it's, it's kind of doing really good. So I don't know if I'm gonna reintroduce caffeine I don't know if I need that thing that creates all those things I just talked about put back in my system. So let's talk about carnivore and uh, coffee. You know, I, I drank coffee till last week. I'm not gonna say you're bad if you drink coffee, if that's what's keeping you on the carnivore path of getting your health back in order, but you need to look, how's your sleep? Um, you need to look at what physical, actual physical condition do you have? Is that affecting your body or not? Like, it's up to you. I'm not going to be the carnivore police. I'm not going to say you can't drink coffee. I mean, that would be totally hypocritical, first of all. Second of all, it's something that you have to decide to do, and you have to understand what's happening in your body. You have to see how that drink might be affecting your body or how that caffeine could be affecting your body uh, and mind in ways that you had no idea. Really, for me, it was affecting me mentally more than physically, but that I can perceive. Um, but obviously it's affecting me physically also if I'm creating stress and creating these antibodies, which is my assumption. And I will verify that with tests in about three months. So it's up to you on the coffee. Uh, in the video of Ken Berry on how to do the carnivore diet, uh, and I will put that link in the description, he definitely talks about 
drinking coffee, drinking tea if it doesn't affect you. So I'm not like, you have to stop it, but it's all you and your results and how good or bad you feel as a result. But you know, it doesn't hurt to try for a little while because you know, carnivore is the ultimate elimination diet. And if we we're gonna be strict, 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 strict carnivore, uh, following the Dr. Anthony Chafee path, which is a great path to follow if that's what you need to do, it's meat, salt, water. And that's like the, the purest form of carnivore. So yeah, coffee isn't in that mix. So those are my thoughts. Uh, like I said, I'm not the carno I'm not the food police. I want you to feel good. Like that's why I'm doing all of this. It's not because I want to subscribe to some ideology and follow exactly like, oh, I have to do this. You know, I want to feel better. Oh my God, I gotta tell you, look. Okay, if you watch my other YouTube videos and look closely, you can tell my teeth are yellow. And I was like brushing my teeth constantly. I still brush my teeth. Uh, there, it literally looks like I bleached my teeth after like a week off of coffee. So coffee, I'm trying to constantly get like the yellowing off my teeth. I actually thought I was gonna have to eventually bleach my teeth once I was withdrawn from coffee and they literally look bleached. So that's another crazy side effect of not drinking coffee. If you drink coffee, um, there you go. That's what I have to say. Um, I love coffee and I will miss you. Goodbye.